What's up trainers? Today we're trying a new kind of video. Sadly, my laptop cannot handle recording a screen, getting audio, and doing my webcam. So, you're going to see a lot of freezing in this video, both for my webcam and the screen, but don't worry, the audio is still good, and you can fast forward ahead if you just want to see the tier list. So enjoy some funny faces. We tested it out, and I'm still going to post this video. So enjoy. Here we go. Welcome trainers. Today we've got a different kind of video for the channel. We're going to be doing a tier list in a post greedent world. Now, just a couple clarifying things before we jump in about what this tier list is. This is my perspective as a player in Masters who's exclusively solo queue. So this is going to be for the average solo queue player, everywhere from veteran to Masters, but not considering team comps or high level play where you're coordinating with a team, just strictly for solo play. Also, I'm going to rank, as you can see, one, two, three, four, and five plus, and that's going to be based on role. So I'm going to talk about the best Pokemon in each role, in my opinion. So if you're looking to pick up an attacker, which is best against other attackers, because it's really hard to compare a defender to an attacker, for example. So let's jump straight into it. We got a lot of Pokemon to get through, and I'll give you just a couple quick comments on each. Now let's first start off with the attacker here. Attacker is a role that lots of people want to play. It's tons of fun and you get to really carry and do a lot of damage. Now, if I had to pick one attacker to play with as a solo queue player right now, I think it's still, despite some buffs, going to be Venusaur. Venusaur is still really good, and if you can remember back for a while, people were running Sludge Bomb Solar Beam, and they actually just buffed that build. And so I think there's actually two really viable builds right now, and so I think Venusaur is still the best hard carry attacker in the game. Now the next two, really attacker is stacked full of good mons. And if I had to pick a second best, I see a ton of Cinderace, and I think it's because it's just really good. Super high damage output, it's not extremely difficult to play. It can lane, it can jungle, and carry really well. And then also, I'm actually going to put two Pokemon here, right in second tier. Greninja has seen some reworking since we saw a time when it was really one of the best attackers in the game, but I think both Cinderace and Greninja are similar in distance, attack, damage, carry type Pokemon. I think their kits are somewhat similar, and I think they do effectively the same thing. Now, we've also had a lot of new Pokemon. Well, not a lot of new one, but we have this new Pokemon, Sylveon, which I think I'm loving Sylveon. It did receive a huge nerf after it got released, but I still think running a Hyper Voice Combine build is very powerful with Sylveon. It lanes really well. It's a nice partner to have. And I think it's a very solid attacker. And I would say with any of these, these are still four of the best mons in the game as a whole. And so you really can't go wrong. Now next, I think also in there with Sylveon, eh, very similar. I don't think you could go wrong. Alola Ninetales. Take some team synergy. It's been around for a long time. So I think people are really sleeping on this mon. But I think Alola Ninetales and Sylveon feel like they have about the same amount of impact to me. If you have a really good game with them, just like any mon, but they can really carry in a good games, but even when they're not, they're still doing useful, effective things. Now at fourth, I think Pikachu received some huge buffs in this last patch, and it actually feels pretty good running a Thunder and Thunderbolt play now with Pikachu. I've had some very good games. It finally feels like it has just enough in the late game to still be impactful, and I think that even though it's in fourth here on the attacker list, I think it's still doing really well. Now, two Pokemon, I think, even though I put Cromorant at the bottom here, I think it's really more of a case of it takes a high skill ceiling to be good with this Pokemon. A Master of Cromorant is extremely annoying to play against and very good, but for the average player, I think it's just struggling. And then Gardevoir, I'm so sad, but I think it is the worst attacker right now, and not for lack of being fun, I, I've tried so hard to make this Pokemon good, but the early game, until you hit level 10, you're just really waiting for 10 and just too long similar similar to the struggles that garchomp has or has had and it's receiving less buffs than garchomp has and they're not even really working on it so gardevoir i'm gonna hold out that it becomes better because it's incredibly fun and one of my favorite pokemon to play but right now i just don't think it takes makes much sense now speedsters for the number one slot i think we have a huge debate right now between zara aura and talonflame both of these pokemon incredible in the jungle and both of them have the ability to hard carry your team and are just incredible. They have the movement, they have the power, everything you want from a jungler. Now, I do think for the number one slot, I'm going to stick to picking one Pokemon to recommend as the best. And then as we move through, maybe there will be a couple ties. But 
but I think just edging out a little bit, I think is going to be Zero Aura. And really the only reason for this to me is that Zero Aura can be in lane and still be effective. So I think that points to some things that shows it's got just a little more. It's Discharge almost feels like a Unite move in itself. It's so powerful. Talonflame, like I said, right there close with it, but Talonflame can't really sustain itself in lane. And so because of that, I think we're going to give the slight edge at the speedster roll in the jungle to Zera Aura over Talonflame. And the next two, I actually think Gengar got buffed pretty well. I've tried out some Gengar running back between the two builds it has, and they feel pretty nice. Um, I think the Pokemon's in a decent spot, but it's just a question of like, why wouldn't you just pick Zera Aura or Talonflame? Because both of those feel better and take less work to go off even though Gengar's mechanics are good, and I think the Pokemon is in a good spot right now. And then lastly, Absol. Absol has just always sort of fallen behind. I know if you have an Absol that goes off in a game, it does a lot of work, but right now, it just, comparatively to the other Pokemon, it doesn't have the same kind of mobility. It really relies on critical hits, and I just think it's the worst of all of the speedsters. Next up, we're going to move on to Supporter, which is the smallest of the, the Pokemon sets. There's only three of them. And I actually think the best is our old friend Eldegoss. And this is specifically from a support role. Now I'll go ahead and throw Mr. Mime up here at two because Mr. Mime can deal a lot of damage, can act almost more of an all-arounder, but from an actual support standard, uh, we still see Eldegoss running away at the high ranks. Its ability to both deal damage, control the lane, and heal just keeps it in a really good spot. And when I've got a good Eldegoss on my team, I am thrilled. Whereas if I have a good Mr. Mime or Blissey on my team, I just feel like maybe they're decent lane partners, but don't quite offer the same thing as Eldegoss. And Blissey is a weird Pokemon. You know, it got released, and I think people tried it out, and then it just never caught on. So I don't know if there's just not enough going on or if it's a boring kit, but I pretty much don't see people playing Blissey right now, even though it's a fairly new Pokemon. So let me know what you guys think about Blissey. Now on to all-arounders, and if you guys watch Crashy, I'll link his channel below. Crashy has talked a lot about how all-arounders in general, with the exception of Lucario, just have a big sad problem in that they can't, they need to jungle in order to be good because they... Uh, just the experience and the level up and the way that all arounders are working right now, they really need to be in the jungle. But at the same time, you want your speedsters like a Zero or, an, or a Talonflame in the jungle. And so it really leaves all arounders in this weird spot where they need to lane, but they're also not your best option in lane, but they're also not usually your best option in jungle. And that is, of course, with the exception of Lucario, even post this last nerf, uh, still just very good. It's one of the best Pokemon in the game, can solo a lane if he needs to is really strong. The power-up punch is an effective move. You guys know about Lucario. He's still the best all-arounder. Now, second, it gets kind of interesting. I think all three, Charizard, Garchomp, and then Machamp, are on the precipice of being good. They're so close. And I actually think Charizard has taken over the second best slot here with a few recent uh, reworks and things going on. If you have a good Charizard, particularly one that can be in the jungle, it really can do a lot of good work. It's just the question of who we're who are we losing to take up this Charizard. And then uh, Garchomp, I think, feels pretty nice. The attack buffs are good. I still think the Pokemon is just lacking something. They're really close to hitting the sweet spot, I think, with this Pokemon. I think they have to be careful now with the attack buffs. If they do much else to improve the Pokemon, it could just become a nightmare and be way too good. But I think it needs a way to be a little stickier more than it just needs more straight damage. So hopefully that's something they can work out. It's an incredibly fun Pokemon that I want to play and like, but I just can't. And then actually my favorite all-arounder is Machamp, but sadly he just hasn't had much going for him. I don't really think he compares to the others. Uh, submission feels fun when you do it, but he just relies too much on being close to the enemy. He just can't really do things that other Pokemon can do. And so I do think sadly Machamp is the worst of the all-arounders. Now lastly, we're going to get to a stacked category similar to attackers where there's a lot of good options. There's a lot of debate on who's the best. And so let's get straight into it. Now, I do think for solo queue purposes, let's be clear here, for solo queue purposes, I think that Crustle is actually in the second best area. Crustle, I think, is underrated, probably not super good on team comps because Crustle can go with this crazy thing where he's building and he's, he's going into the enemy lane and he's jungling the enemy's farm and he's scoring goals crazy, almost playing a game by himself. But if you're playing against a coordinated team, 
that's just not an option. But for solo queue, I think Crustle is really nice, and if you learn to play the Pokemon, can be really good. Now, I think Greedent right now is up here in fighting for this second best lie. I think a lot of people would put him at one just because his attack stat is crazy. But I'm also thinking here for the role of defender, he to me right now, just with his damage output, plays more like an all-arounder. You know, he can sustain himself in lane with those berries, tons out, pumps out massive damage. But I just think from an actual tank defender role, he's not doing as much as somebody could. So I still think that the best defender in the game, even for a solo queue, is Snorlax. I think some people would argue this and say that you need a team comp for Snorlax, but if you're a good Snorlax who knows what he's doing, your zoning potential is amazing. He's still got all the things that he had when he was good, when people were talking about him a month or two ago. And I just think Snorlax is the best option. Now, second, I think, also we have Blastoise. And then with that, another new Pokemon. I think Mamoswine is a little underrated right now. So Blastoise did receive a nerf, and so he's not the best tank because he, dilled, he still does all the tank work that he needs to, zoning people out, moving people around, and things like that. But his Unite move now does a reasonable amount of damage, but still has insane crowd control on that Unite move. And so I still think he's a very good move. And Mamoswine, I just think the potential of this Pokemon has not really been figured out. I think we got, you know, really quick releases from Mamoswine to Greedent. And I think people are sleeping on Mamoswine still, in my opinion. And so still a very good option. Uh, and now Wigglytuff and Clefairy is in here, but I don't think Clefairy is in the game. Wigglytuff, I missed. I believe Clef uh, Wigglytuff is actually a supporter. Uh, but either way, so even if I missed that, we're just going to stick him up here. Uh, we'll move all the supporters down one because I forgot about Wigglytuff. And I think Wigglytuff is just the best supporter overall. He just does so much sing, can lock opponents down, he can do high damage, he stays alive in lane. I do actually think from a supporter standpoint, he's slightly better than Eldegoss, uh, but you guys let me know what you think. So we're gonna count him as a supporter because I think that's what it is, even though this background is not quite right here. And then moving back to tanks, lastly, again, so slowly, for some reason, I'm drawn to a lot of these bad Pokemon. Gardevoir, Machamp, and Slowbro are three of my favorites that I try so hard to like but they're just not quite as good. You know, Slowbro, a really good Slowbro can zone people out massively, incredibly, uh, but it just doesn't do as much work as some of these other tanks you, that, as, as you guys can see. So what do you guys think about this tier list? Let me know what you think. Let me know what you agree with, disagree with. Uh, hopefully this will help you choose Pokemon or at least get your brain thinking and flowing in what should I choose? What can I choose over that? I hope your guys' next battle is your best one yet. Good luck out there, my friends.